Avengers Endgame is only a few weeks away, and the excitement in the Marvel fandom has never been higher. After the unexpected and emotionally devastating conclusion to Avengers Infinity War, audiences around the world immediately want to see the sequel film. The stakes have never been higher in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and the remaining heroes will have to fight tooth and nail to defeat Thanos and restore half of all life in the universe. Or will they? Oh, come on! It seems increasingly likely that the Mad Titan may come to regret his apocalyptic snap and, by the end of the film, work with his former enemies to undo the catastrophe. Now that may seem a bit far-fetched, he is the biggest baddie in the MCU after all, but there are a lot of indications that Thanos will have a change of heart before the end of the next Avengers film. This video will take a look at Thanos' character and his place within the MCU, why this flip would align with his strongly defined morals, and how similar characters in film have had a similar change of heart. Get ready, because we're about to snap to it and dig into one of the most radical Marvel theories out there. Thanos acted as a looming threat for the majority of his time as a character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. First appearing in a post credit scene in the first Avengers film, he brought about a tangible shift in the franchise. He was a looming threat that most characters weren't even aware of, but the audience knew was an encroaching threat. After his introduction, the MCU stopped easing audiences into this universe of superhumans and instead started diving headfirst into the stories of these heroes and villains. Essentially, Thanos extended the scope and danger in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and the scale of each film began to increase rapidly in preparation of him playing a more active role in the series. The Guardians of the Galaxy film let the franchise explore space, Captain America Civil War explored the politics of a superhuman society, and Thor Ragnarok tied the many facets of this cinematic universe together. None of these expansions would have happened if Thanos hadn't come along and opened up the entire universe for exploration. Once Thanos decides to play a more active role in the series, made clear by his badass I'll do it myself line at the end of Avengers Age of Ultron, we finally get a better sense of who he is in Avengers Infinity War. In a twist no one saw coming, Thanos was actually the main character of the film, and the movie followed him as though he was a typical superhero protagonist. The opening act established him and his goals, the second act explored why he felt he had to destroy half of all life in the universe and cemented his commitment to his ideology, and the third act even had an all-is-lost moment for Thanos when he was impaled by Thor's axe before barely managing to emerge victorious. Making Thanos the de facto protagonist of Avengers Infinity War gave audiences a deeper look into his character than any other villain in the MCU. Having witnessed his home planet Titan fall into ruin because of a lack of resources, he believes all the problems in the universe stem from overpopulation. Thanos genuinely believes that he's doing the right thing by killing half of all the universe and sees the Avengers as villains trying to stop his noble cause. In short, he is the hero of his own story, unlike previous Marvel villains, the movie treats him like a hero. Even if his genocidal plan is obviously evil, and that his moral compass is so messed up it's practically demagnetized, he is by far the most sympathetic MCU villain. Even if he is fundamentally wrong, he still believes himself to be a hero, and Infinity War shows him suffering and overcoming as much hardships as any of the Marvel heroes in their own movies. His strong sense of morality and sympathetic depiction is especially surprising considering the previous villains in the MCU. Most Marvel villains are pretty one-dimensional, or depicted as entirely evil people or creatures. The first villain in the series, the Ironmonger, was an evil businessman who was willing to kill Tony Stark to gain control of his company. Ronan the Accuser, the first alien baddie, was just a space tyrant who wanted to destroy the Nova Corps. Not to mention the first magical villain, Dormammu, was an inherently evil cosmic being that wanted to expand his dark dimension. While there are some truly great villains in the MCU that make powerful statements about our society, like Hela from Thor Ragnarok or Killmonger from Black Panther, they aren't ever depicted as anything other than villains. Thanos is the first Marvel villain to really defend and justify his actions with personal beliefs, even if it's obvious that he's in the wrong. There's a good chance that Thanos could come to regret his actions and join the Avengers, because he's the first villain in the MCU to really consider the moral consequences of his plan. He wiped out half of all in the universe because his experiences and circumstances led him to believe that it was the only way for him to make the universe a better place. He didn't kill countless people for his own benefit or simply because he's a force of destruction. He did it because the drive to save the universe with the snap was at the core of his identity. A person's identity can change though, and there's a good chance that Thanos could come to regret the snap and align with the Avengers to undo it. The Mad Titan is just that, mad. 
After enduring the trauma of his planet falling to ruin and experiencing the death of his loved ones, it makes sense that he'd be a bit unhinged and follow through with his genocidal plan. Even if his actions are obviously horrible, to him, they were fully justified. Not that he has everything he's ever wanted. He may realize that his decisions were clouded by grief and the many sacrifices he made not worth it. As he spends time alone on his farm, it may soon dawn on him that he could have saved the universe without having to kill so many people. That perhaps he took the easy way out, instead of fighting for a universe where everyone could be happy. Or maybe he'll come to deeply regret sacrificing his daughter to follow through with his plan. He may realize that any plan that robbed Gamora of her autonomy cannot be a just one. Her death could continue to haunt him and drive him to work with the Avengers to revive half of all life in existence. Then again, he may just decide to work to undo the snap after realizing how ineffective it was. Thanos' entire philosophy hinged on the idea that resource scarcity was the cause of all of civilization's problems. This extremely economic perspective doesn't exactly work as well in execution as it does on paper, though. Removing scarcity by killing people won't curb greed or end ideological conflicts. If anything, he just slowly slowed down the progression of sentient life by solving a problem using the worst possible solution. Given enough time, the universe will become overpopulated once again, the same problems will be worse than ever, and Thanos will have found all of his efforts to be pointless. Moreover, if Avengers Endgame continues to treat Thanos like the protagonist, he is sure to regret his snap. Thanos' character arc wrapped up perfectly at the end of Infinity War. With his life's work complete, he retired to his farm and no longer wants to meddle in the affairs of the universe. The only way his character could continue to grow is by coming to regret killing half the universe, and then working to undo his heinous actions. Thanos' story feels like it's over, and it would be unusual if all he did in the next film was try to stop the Avengers from bringing people back to life. That would feel like a major waste of such a great character and reduce him to the mediocre status of most of the villains in the MCU. The most substantial reason for why Thanos will end up working with the Avengers is because of long-standing trends in action and superhero genre of cinema. While these movies can tell nearly any kind of story in any kind of way, they also fall into some pretty substantial and predictable tropes. Thanos will redeem himself in Endgame because most movies don't know how to make a villain both sympathetic and still evil. Most villains in action movies fall into one of two categories. They are either outright forces of evil that only exist to test the hero, or sympathetic baddies that are justified in their villainous efforts, if not misguided. Take for instance the Joker and Catwoman from the Christopher Nolan Batman films. Both are extremely well-defined villains that only seek to further their own interests for the majority of their time on screen. However, the audience isn't supposed to sympathize with the Joker and his desire to prove that people are as bad as he thinks they are. Catwoman, even though she isn't ever called that in the film, instead resonates with the audience and most viewers can empathize with her thievery because society unfairly wronged her. By the end of their respective films, the Joker is beaten up and never seen again, while Catwoman and Batman settle their differences before vacationing together while Alfred creeps on them from a distance. There just aren't a lot of superhero and action movies where the villain is a sympathetic creature and they don't somehow redeem themselves by the end of the storyline. Which is a shame, because a nuanced story where a character does horror things for understandable reasons and is still treated as a bad person could offer plenty of insights on how we view good and evil as a society. This trend of redeeming sympathetic villains in action movies goes back for decades to boot. In Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2 film from 2004, the villain Dr. Octopus is driven to insanity after an experiment goes wrong and puts thousands of lives in danger over the course of the film. The audience is meant to feel bad for Doc Ock, as he isn't in control of his actions and wouldn't hurt so many people otherwise. At the end of the film, though, he reigns in his senses and sacrifices himself to save New York City from his doomsday device. Rather than face the consequences of his unintentional actions, Dr. Octopus dies a hero in this movie and redeems himself in that instant. Since he's a sympathetic character dealing with his own trauma, the movie doesn't have him exit the series as a villain. Doing so would actually make it a worse film and undercut its message of the power of everyday kindness and the fundamental goodness of humanity. Dialing the clock even further back to 1982, the sci-fi masterpiece Blade Runner also falls into the trope of redeeming sympathetic villains. The central villain of the film, Roy Batty, is an android determined to kill his creator and as many humans as possible in retaliation for his life of servitude. Although his motivations are extremely sympathetic and even justified, for the majority of the film he's depicted as a villain who brutally harms human beings. However, at the end of the film, he saves protagonist Rick Deckard's life and realizes that he was wrong to kill so many people. As he dies, he realizes the value in his brief existence and gains a better grasp of his own identity. 
He does not perish as a mass-murdering robot justified in rebelling against humanity, but as someone just beginning to understand their own feelings. He didn't die a villain, as he finally learned the value of his and all life. Because Thanos is a sympathetic villain, he will have some kind of redemption in Avengers Endgame, and likely work with the Avengers to bring back all the people he killed. It's one of the longest-running tropes in action movies, and for as original as the MCU can feel, it probably won't break this trend. Then again, it probably shouldn't even try to, as the best way to take down Thanos' ideology is for he himself to turn against it. Thanos will regret his snap, and likely work with the Avengers to undo it before the end of Avengers Endgame. This redemption fits with his deeply held mortality. It's really the only way the character can still grow at this point, and sympathetic villains almost always have a heel turn at some point in these kinds of movies. Thanos is nothing short of the best villain in the entirety of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He opened up the franchise to new heights and is absolutely going to go out on a high note. If he sticks to his guns in the next movie, he'll become a rather one-note obstacle for the heroes to overcome. However, if he continues to grow like he did in Infinity War, he will almost certainly aid the Avengers before the end of the movie. We may not know exactly how Thanos will come to regret his snap or what's in store for him as the MCU goes on, but he will try to redeem himself before the end of the movie. The only way to get those details, though, will be to watch the highly anticipated film once it premieres on April 26th. Thanks so much for checking out this video. Please let us know what you think of this theory in the comments down below, and be sure to like this video while you're there. Also, be sure to subscribe to Behind the Screen and hit the bell icon so you don't miss a single one of our videos analyzing some of the best characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe.